So I know what you're all wondering. You're like, Chris, how was your 4th of July? Well, thank you for asking. First and foremost, it was amazing because I binged watched all of Stranger Things season three with my beautiful girlfriend, Tristan, and my awesome little boy. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is typically I pull different topics from the YouTube community, but I also like to pull topics from movies, TV shows, and things like that to see what lessons we can learn from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you're new here, I also write books and my brand new book, Rewire Your Anxiety, is out now. So check down in the description and the link below I got a sale going on because I just launched it and it's running until Sunday. So get yourself a copy. You'll get another free copy of one of my books as well. All right. So yeah, anyways, for those of you who clicked on this video and you didn't know, like this is going to be filled with spoilers. All right. And by the way, let me know down in the comments below, like I want to do character breakdowns because each character kind of had their own little storyline throughout this season and they all kind of grew and evolved, especially since, you know, the kids are turning into teenagers and stuff like that. And there's a lot of life lessons there. So in this video, obviously I'm gonna be focusing on Hopper, my man, but like, if you want me to talk about different ones, like I wanna talk about the relationship between like Mike and Elle, as well as the friend group as a whole and some other different, really interesting topics. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know. Let me know down in the comments below. All right, or if you like this video, that's a good indicator as well. All right, so yeah, spoilers ahead. First thing, I, I just wanna talk a little bit. I'm still, I'm still recovering from Hopper, what happened. Like, okay, like, can I just talk real quick, just me and you? I don't think he's gone. I don't think he's gone. So did you guys realize like there was an end credit scene? Like, I was like, I wonder if there's an end credit scene. And there was, I don't think they did that in previous seasons, but let me know if they did and I'm, I'm wrong. But anyways, like they mentioned like some Americans. I'm like, okay, because I like Hopper is like, the man in this show, right? Like the kids are cool, the kids are cute, but Hopper does work. Hopper was a straight up gangster throughout the season, right? Like, well, not that's the season, but the whole show. Like, remember when he whooped up the mayor? <laughs> but anyway, so I, I'm hoping he like somehow went through that portal at the end. He's like chilling in the upside down, or maybe he like ported over to Russia or whatever. If you have any theories about Hop how Hopper might still be alive, let me know down in the comments. Maybe it'll help me sleep at night. <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyways, yeah, I want to talk about his speech. Okay, and there's so many different ways I could talk about this, but anyways, let's summarize it real quick. So um, Mike and Elle, you know, their relationship's getting, you know, serious or whatever it is, um, as serious as it could be for some young kids, right? And he's spending uh, all his time with Elle and Hopper's obviously getting cheesed off. So he is going to give this little speech and like talk to them like adults and set up boundaries. So real quick, by the way, on that note, I do agree, like that is one of the best ways to talk to young people, right? We have to treat them like they're human beings. Like something I hated more than anything, hell, it's still something that I hate to this day as a 34 year old man, which is being talked down to, right? So we do have to talk to them like, like they're adults, right? Like kids, especially teenagers, like they get things, right? But anyways, I do kind of dig how like uh, <laughs> Hopper improvised and he gave Mike that stern talk in the truck like, let me tell you, let me tell you, I had a girlfriend in high school where <laughs> I got one of those talks and oh my God, all right? And I think it's good. I think it's good too, because like Mike was being like a little disrespectful, like SOB. Like, did you see the way he was cussing at Hopper? Like, Mike is lucky that Hopper didn't put hands on him, all right? But anyways, at the end, um, they find Hopper's letter and L reads it. So I'm not gonna play the clip because I don't want Netflix to claim my video. So I actually wrote down the one part of the speech that I wanted to focus on, all right? So Hopper says, make mistakes and learn from them. And when life hurts you, because it will, remember the hurt. The hurt is good. It means you're out of that cave. Oh, preach Hopper, preach. 
So I can relate a ton to Hopper. And if you've been following my channel, what I keep trying to teach all of you is that we need to find the similarities and not the differences, all right? So my experience is much different than Hopper's, but I understand that feeling. So in Hopper's case, we find out in season one that he had a daughter and his daughter passed away, right? And Hopper became this like guy and he was like abusing drugs and alcohol and he was closed off to the rest of the world. But the, then he ends up taking in Eleven, right? And what he's trying to explain to her is, is that, you know, he's, he's, he loves her like a daughter and he worries for her and everything like that. But it came with taking down those walls that he built up, right? But he said that hurt is good because it shows that he's no longer numbing himself and not feeling anything. See, so many of us, so many of us, we just don't wanna feel emotions, but like, we have to. And that's the thing, like I forgot where the quote came from. Maybe it might have been Gandhi or whatever it is, but we need to experience pain in order to experience joy because if not, what would we have to gauge it against, right? So like, that's just part of the human experience is that the good and the bad, like it's a package deal, baby. Like one of the delusions, the irrational beliefs that we have is that everything should always be good. No, we're gonna have bad times, but you know what? When you're having an amazing day, like that's how you gauge it, like, whoa, this day is way better than that day, right? So in Hopper's case, his days, spending those with, you know, 11 and like, you know, he talks about like those ego stacks and things like that that they made and, you know, all those things, like that's way better than the days when he was grieving the loss of his daughter, right? So the way I can relate to that is I had a lot of emotions that I didn't wanna deal with my entire life, right? I had anxiety and depression that started to develop when I was about the kid's age in Stranger Things, right? And I was so angry at everybody and everything. I hated everybody, I hated myself and all these things. And that's when I turned to substances. So those of you who don't know me, I just celebrated seven years, no alcohol, no drugs, just 100% clean and sober, baby. But anyways, for almost a decade, I was trying to numb myself. I didn't, I just didn't want to feel anything. And the first time, the first time I got drunk, I was like, oh my God, like, I don't care about anything. I don't feel anything. And that's what I craved. That's what I wanted, right? And I remember when I first got sober, like, all of my emotions came back because I had been numbing myself for so long. It's like... The way I kind of explain it is, it felt like somebody just like ripped my soul out of my body. I had no emotions. I was no longer angry or depressed, but I was never happy or sad. It was like, I was just like this zombie just kind of going through the motions of life. And when I got sober, I got, I got hit with all those feelings again, right? And something that's kind of common for people in early recovery is we cry. We cry all the time. We cry like little babies. I know I look like the manliest dude you've ever met in your life, but I ain't ashamed to admit, like, I cried like a baby over the weirdest things. Like, I remember I was watching, like, a, a commercial. It was, like, for car insurance, but it showed a family, and I was, like, 30 days sober, and I'm just like, oh, my God, it's so, it's so beautiful. And, like, and I learned to love crying because I had suppressed my feelings and emotions for so long. And today, and it's taken a lot of work to get to this place, but because I no longer try to run away from my emotions, I have better days than I've ever had in my life because I take in the good and the bad. You know what I mean? And what Hopper is teaching Elle is that Something that we should all be teaching our kids, right? Like setting our kids up to believe that life is just forever gonna be like all unicorns and rainbows and lollipops, that is setting them up for failure, right? Like I have a 10 year old son, we binge watched Stranger Things together today, right? And I've taught him since he was younger to work on his mental health and to embrace those feelings. And all of those feelings, they are there to teach us a lesson, right? They are there to guide us in the future. And something that I've really been talking about a lot lately is when we're going through something, like today, if you're watching this video and you're having a bad day, just remember, you've already been through this before. You've been here, you've been to this place. What did you do, 
right? Like think about that for a second. We have to look back to those experiences where we've been through that struggle, where we've been through that pain. And we need to not only A, remember what we did to get out of that place, but B, we need to remember how strong and resilient we are and that we can get through these hard times. And it's because we've been through that hurt. Like anybody out there watching this, if you've been through some stuff, like you are a bad A mofo, all right? I'm trying to keep this video monetized, but just remember that. Like if you've been through that hurt, that pain, that struggle, you have learned, you have grown, and you are stronger than ever, right? But anyways, anyways, let me know if you can relate to this like did you keep walls up like are you somebody who's had to learn how to take in the good and the bad feelings are you somebody who keeps trying to push away all the bad feelings well, let me know is that a rational thing to do down in the comments below but again like i said if there's other character breakdowns and story arcs that you want me to discuss let me know down in the comments below and before i let you go don't forget my brand new book rewire your anxiety is out now and part of that book a huge part of that book is to quit doing your avoidance tactics, all right, and just embracing these things, okay? But that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos and I'm making more Stranger Things videos, all right? And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. If you would like to become a patron and support what I'm doing here and get access to some other perks and benefits, click or tap on that icon right there, all right? Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.